you want to be anything in life, you must do more than your competition. Being average won't get you anywhere these days. It's time for you to step up to the plate and be serious. Your ancestors did not die for you to become a weak dopamine-filled sheep who procrastinates over the smallest of things. If you carry on with this behavior, someone like me will just come along and snatch your goals away from you. Life is competitive. Everything is competition, whether it's against yourself or other people. How do you think I, the power analysis, got into the position that I am in now? Do you think my competition just wanted me to succeed over them? Of course not, and they never will. Ladies and gentlemen, the only question I have for you before I show you how to train like Aina Koji Kiyotaka in the white room is this. Will you sacrifice to achieve your goals? Or will you let your goals become the sacrifice? If you can't watch through this whole video and take notes on how to improve your life, then there's your answer on why you'll never succeed. The greatest of people never stop learning. So why should you? The Ayanokoji Mindset Before you do anything, you need to change your mind. You need to toughen it up so you don't quit as soon as you hit your first obstacle. Your mind has something called the subconscious mind and a conscious mind. The conscious mind is your active thought. The subconscious mind is the result of your conscious mind's acceptance and operates in the background whilst you're not actively thinking. This is so you can get movement and tasks done automatically without wasting mental energy. Let's say you heard from your friends that six hours of sleep is good for you. Your conscious mind now has to either accept that suggestion or reject it. If you accept it, that information goes into your subconscious and becomes a fact. If you reject it, it does not. Now, for the sake of this explanation, let's say you accept that six hours of sleep is good for you and you start sleeping for six hours. However, you start feeling tired every morning and you're lacking energy. Now, your subconscious is on the edge of crumbling simply due to your actual personal experience. And one day, you stumble upon a research paper from an authentic source indicating that six hours of sleep is detrimental to your health and that people should be getting eight hours of sleep instead. What happens next? Your subconscious belief of six hours of sleep is good crumbles and gets replaced with eight hours of sleep is good. This happened because one, your personal experience and your friend's explanations did not align. And two, the research paper from the authentic source is more powerful than your friend's opinion. I hope you understand at least a little of what I was trying to convey. Knowing this, doesn't it mean that we are all indoctrinated by someone or something? Doesn't this mean that our free thought is not actually free, since our indoctrination shaped our beliefs and opinions, which those same beliefs and opinions reflect into our free thought? Doesn't this mean that we all have opinions and thoughts that are simply incorrect, even though they may seem to be true? Doesn't this mean that we can easily be controlled by research, media, celebrities and parents since we view them as authoritative figures? The question is not how we can stop indoctrination, because that simply is impossible. The question you should ask yourself is, who do I want to be indoctrinated by? And this is a scary question to ask yourself because you don't know anyone's true intentions. So your first action point is this. Action point one, understand who you want to be indoctrinated by. Who is it that you want to become? How do you want to talk to people? How do you want to view the world? Is there a particular way you want to dress? You must seek out what you want. And once knowing what you want, you follow the demonstrator, aka a figure that aligns with your ideal future image on who you want to be. Now don't limit yourself to just one person. It can be a broad range of figures. For example, I want to cook like Gordon Ramsay, be well versed in psychology like Jordan Peterson, and to sell like Jordan Belford. Now once you understand what you want, all you have to do is, one, learn from them, which could be from podcasts, YouTube videos, books, or even in person. And then two, repeat their actions. Do what they tell you to do. What did Ayano Koji do in the white room? Well, he was actually indoctrinated by the authors of the books he was reading. And he was also indoctrinated by his father and teachers. It is said that he has more knowledge than books that you can read in a lifetime. I don't even know how that works, but there you go. Indoctrination isn't a negative thing. It's only negative when you're not aware and are chewing on the incorrect information. So please, accept who you trust, deny the people you don't, and understand that there is no escaping this. Creating the White Room
You probably don't have a teacher that gives you topics to learn. You probably don't have chefs that cook the most ideal food with the perfect amount of nutrients just for your body type. And there's probably no legal white room program in the world that you can join. But what do you have? Control of your environment. Do you know why students were put into the white room and not the crazy rainbow TikTok room? Visual stimulation. The white room completely destroys any distraction from the task at hand, which is learning. And this is not a drag to the brain or harmful in any way, because the brain adapts. If your brain adapts to constant focus, learning and retention, you're going to learn much quicker. If your brain is constantly exposed to TikTok reels and sounds whilst trying to learn something, you're not getting anything done. And I know some people will comment, but I can't focus very well. I always get distracted by this or that. And my answer to you would be, congratulations. You've arrived at the right place because the white room is exactly the thing that will fix your procrastination. Action point two, how to create the white room. No, your room doesn't have to be fully painted in white. So put your brushes away. What you do need, however, is all distractions out of the room. I'm talking about phones, music devices, laptops, PCs, gaming console. Just leave all of those things in another room. If you want to learn about a topic that you're interested in, make sure it's in book form and not a video. It doesn't matter if you're a visual learner. As I said, your brain adapts. If you're super bored, you don't give a shit if the topic is in a book. You open it up and start reading and that is exactly what we want to happen. Some may call this a dopamine detox, when actions that were previously seen as hard become easier, or things that become boring now become interesting. And this happens when you don't touch any devices for a long period of time. You'll start seeing results about 24 hours into this, like increased focus, increased drive and motivation, and just not being a bitch overall. But the real benefits kick in after a couple of days, because now you're rewiring your brain. This is exactly what happened to Ayanokoji Kiyotaka. Now you might say, but he didn't have technology like we do, so he didn't get distracted as easily. And that's exactly my point, isn't it? What I've noticed among people is that they have a huge fear of missing out. And I can tell you, there is nothing to miss out about social media, games, or whatever else. You can come back after a couple of days and it will all be fine. I'm not saying to leave your devices forever. What I am saying is to take a break from them so you can learn more effectively and understand the benefits that you gain. You truly have to try it out for yourself because only you can understand the benefits, not some research paper you find on the internet. Books. As you know, Ainokoji lived on books. That is how he became as smart as he is. He just kept on consuming books containing great information. And that is exactly what you need to do in order to become like Ainokoji. These are books catered toward altering your mind to become like Ainokoji Kiyotaka. Each book has an individual purpose, so you get a wide range of knowledge. All of these books will be displayed in the description. Book one is 48 Laws of Power teaching you how to gain power over others, but most importantly, yourself. Book two is 33 Strategies of War. There are chapters that fully explain how to battle yourself and your mind that drags you down, but it also displays a wide range of offense and defense tactics against your competition. Book three is Mindbreaker, which gives you an in-depth explanation on how to conquer your mind to destroy procrastination and to learn and work 10 times faster than any of your competition. Fourth book is The Power of Habit. This obviously explains how habits are formed and why all habits, bad or good, are entirely your fault. And lastly, fifth book is Can't Hurt Me, which will inspire you to do more and to understand what you're truly capable of. Action point three, invest in yourself. Yes, books cost money, courses cost money, teachers cost money, and some aren't fortunate enough to spend a lot of money on education. But if you are fortunate enough to be living in a decent home, investing in yourself is the most important thing you can do. The government can come knocking on your door tomorrow and take all of your money away. But what can't they take? Your knowledge. That's the first reason. No one can take your knowledge away from you, which is why education will always be on top. And the second reason is money is an investing resource and most of you aren't investing right. 
If you become a master in a certain skill, you know damn well you're getting a good paycheck. But the problem with most people is that they're too scared to pay $10,000, $1,000, and even $100 on something that will greatly increase their income. And that is what you call a terrible investing decision. So be smart, invest in education, because knowledge is the only thing that can't be taken away from you. Before I get into how to improve memory, how to work out like Iona Koji, and why 99% of you will never succeed in this, make sure you subscribe to the Power Analysis YouTube channel as I'll keep on bringing you self-improvement content so you can stay motivated and determined. Food that improves memory and concentration. Very important especially if you want to retain information. What's the point of studying if you're going to forget most of it, right? Now, if you can get the perfect diet for your body, then that would be great. However, a lot of us simply don't have the time, money, or just can't cook. So if you fall into any of these three categories, try to at least incorporate these foods into your diet. First food, fatty fish. This includes salmon, trout, albacore tuna, herring, and sardines. All are rich sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Why is that important? Well, around 60% of your brain is made of fat, and half of it is comprised of omega-3 fatty acids. Your brain uses omega-3s to build brain and nerve cells, and these fats are essential for learning and memory. It helps age-related mental decline and helps ward off Alzheimer's disease. On the flip side, not getting enough omega-3 is linked to learning impairments as well as depression. Second, something to drink coffee. Caffeine keeps your brain alert by blocking adenosine, a chemical messenger that makes you feel sleepy. It improves mood and sharpens concentration. Studies found that caffeine consumption led to short-term improvements in attention and alertness in participants completing a cognition test. And not only that, but drinking coffee over the long term is also linked to a reduced risk of neurological diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. The largest risk reduction was seen in adults who consume three to four cups daily. I myself consume four cups of coffee, not because I'm aiming for peak mental efficiency, but because I'm addicted. Anyway, action point four, getting the stuff. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, just go to the store, buy it and consume it. 99% will never achieve greatness. Cause, low concentration. When clicking this video, did you scroll straight to the comments? That's an indication of low concentration. Are you multitasking right now? Sign of low concentration. The more intense your concentration is, the more you'll get done, retain, understand, and not miss any important parts of a video, book, or study material. In white room, this is of peak importance. This is the reason why Iona Koji got put in the white room and achieved so much. The white room destroys any chance of visual stimulation, anything that can get him distracted. Your first step to peak concentration is to callous your mind, to resist temptation of any sort. Here's a minuscule exercise you can do to start toughening yourself. One, close all apps, turn off electronics, all sounds. Two, sit in a chair in front of a blank wall. And three, stay there for 60 minutes. A lot of you are scared to be with your own thoughts, which is why you'll try resisting this activity and you will have proved my point. 99% of you will never become anything. If this very, very small step cannot be completed by you, you have no hope, I'm sorry. Some of you may say it's a waste of time, yet again, your mind is trying to resist. And for the people that have tried but failed, Keep going. You're doing far better than the people who haven't tried at all. You'll get there soon. For the people who have done this or are currently involved in the practice of meditation, well done. Please continue. After days or weeks or months, depending on how quickly you can adapt, we start removing external sources of distraction. You see, we started with calming the mind, the internal. Because if we don't start with you first, your whole structure will break down. Now the external, simply remove distractions. If you're serious about training like the white room students, sacrifices have to be made. You're here for the truth? Here's something you can chew on. If you're not ready to sacrifice something for the sake of achieving a goal, someone else will. This is a lifestyle, your new way of living. You're either all in or not in at all. Work out like Ainokoji Kiyotaka. Ainokoji looks athletic, has stamina and good cardio, and can fight. So, you need to look athletic, have stamina, and know how to fight. If you want to look in shape, 
simply start lifting weights as that will build muscle. And because you build muscle, you will look athletic. Here's a couple of photos of me so you know that I know what the hell I'm talking about. No, of course I don't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I do look strong and lean, which is what I'm assuming you're going for or even striving for better. For beginners, do a push-pull leg split whilst hitting shoulders on leg day and abs every day. In order to effectively gain muscle, you should eat a good amount of protein and calories. But keep in mind you will start to gain muscle and fat whilst at a calorie surplus, which is totally normal. So don't be discouraged if you start looking a little chunky. For intermediates, I suggest focusing on weak spots. Let's say if your chest is weak, instead of hitting it two times a week, try upping it up to three times a week. Rest and diet is also very important, but I'm sure you're aware of that. To build stamina and cardio, just run, play sports where constant movement is necessary, or just run on a treadmill if you have to. And my advice to you is just go further than the previous run you did. That way you keep on improving. And for fighting, I suggest learning boxing or kickboxing. You do not want to get to the ground during a street fight because you have no idea if your opponent's friends are going to stomp you in your head whilst you're at the ground. If you really want to fight, I suggest boxing or kickboxing. Action point five. Go gym. If you've never been to the gym, just go. I guarantee you, gym bros or gym girls are the nicest people you'll meet. If you need help with performing an exercise, simply ask anyone and they'll be glad to help you out. And if you have been to the gym, keep going. The end. So, have you decided? What will your sacrifice be? Your vices or your goals?